Tonight we're taking a close look at Hurricane Helene, a storm whose journey from formation to dissolve was marked by an extraordinary strength and significant impact far inland. Helene first formed as a tropical disturbance in the warm waters of the Caribbean Sea around September 24th. It intensified into a Category 1 hurricane as it approached the Yucatan Peninsula and it impacted the region on the night of September 25th. The sea surface temperature averaging an alarming 86 degrees Fahrenheit provided the perfect fuel for a rapid intensification. When Helene hit Cancun, it ended up being a Category 1, brought heavy rain, strong winds, and caused considerable flooding. Streets were flooded. The area was substantially impacted on local infrastructure, including cancellation of many flights and many temporary shutdowns of the public transport. The hurricane moved through the peninsula on Tuesday night into Wednesday morning, leaving behind heavy rains that continued even though the storm itself moved away. Wade. Despite the severe weather, there was no reports of tragic incident, although the disruption to daily life was significant. Then as it moved out to the Gulf of Mexico, by midday on September 26, 2024, Helene had intensified into a Category 2. Later on on September 26, 2024, into a Category 3. By the evening of September 26, just before making landfall, Helene reached its peak as a Category 4 with intensified winds up to 140 miles per hour. Hurricane Helene made landfall in Florida near Perry at 11.10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on September 26, 2024 as a Category 4 with winds reaching 140 miles per hour. This marked its second landfall after impacting the Yucatan Peninsula a day earlier. It had devastating storm surge and powerful winds, but the storm's journey didn't end there. Oh no. As most of you already know, powered by a unique combination of atmosphere conditions including a low pressure trough from the west and a high pressure system to its northeast Helene maintained much of its intensity as it moved inland which is rare for hurricanes but not impossible after leaving Perry it continued on its way and then it was downgraded to category 3 and that was in Valdosta Georgia with 125 mile per hour winds on September 27 2024 at 6 a.m. it made its way all the way up to Macon Georgia downgraded to 140 five miles per hour wind that's pretty far inland making is and it continued on august 27th at noon every six hours they were revising this and it was still downgraded to category one it was still the same amount that it was in cancun it was in category one with 90 miles per hour wind in south carolina augusta south carolina as it moved to September 27th, late in the afternoon to Chattanooga, Tennessee, it was downgraded to a tropical storm with 70 mile per hour winds. It continued to be downgraded to a tropical depression on the 28th, Knoxville, Tennessee, and it was downgraded to a tropical depression. So it really moved in far and wide and long, and it was prolonged. As you can see, it hit on the 26th, and it was still within the region on the 28th. So it was a very long period of time. Most people say that that can't happen. Happen, but it does. Helene brought torrential rains and sustained winds across Georgia, then into the Carolinas, and finally reaching Tennessee by September 28th. It was there that Helene now intertwined with another low pressure system, beginning to show signs of weakening. By the early hours of September 29th, Helene was downgraded to a tropical depression, spreading its remaining energies across the South Appalachian regions, leaving a trail of destruction, flooding, widespread spread power outage in its wake. Throughout tonight's report, we'll explore the meteorologic dynamics behind Helene's precedent strength, the implications of such storms. Now let's turn our focus to one of the most devastating aspects of the hurricane, its record-breaking rainfall. This storm delivered an astounding amount of rain across the southern Appalachians, with western North Carolina and eastern Tennessee taking the hardest hit. Some of the areas saw rainfalls totals that were nothing short of historic maybe even biblical. Let's start in Busick, North Carolina, which reported an unbelievable 29.58 inches of rain over just 
a few days, this level of rainfall shattered previous records, turning streets into rivers and causing massive flash floods throughout the area. Just imagine nearly 30 inches of rain. It's like having two and a half feet of water dumped on the entire region. Roads were washed away, homes were submerged, and the rising waters pushed the rivers and lakes far beyond their normal capacity. Not far from Music Mountain, Mount Mitchell State Park also saw an extreme rainfall totaling 24.2 inches. This part of the state is no stranger to heavy rains, but these numbers were way beyond anything the region had seen before. The steep train made things even worse with the excessive water runoff, quickly leading to dangerous flash flooding that affected multiple rural creeks, rivers that usually flow calmly into a raging torrent, sweeping away anything in its path, including roads, trees, there was mudslides all over the place. In Asheville, the story was much the same. The city, nestled in the mountains, received 14 inches of rain in just three days, an amount that broke Asheville's previous record. While 14 inches may seem like a fraction compared to Busick's total, it's more than enough to cause major flooding. Streets became impassable, homes were flooded, and thousands of people lost power. It was a nightmare scenario for a city already vulnerable to flooding from nearby French Board River. Speaking of the French Board, it crested nearly 10 foot higher than its previous record, submerging neighbors and making rescue efforts even more difficult. In some places, boats became the only way to navigate through the flooded streets. But North Carolina wasn't alone in this disaster over in eastern in Tennessee, places like Knott'sville saw 10 to 12 inches. Though it wasn't quite as much as in North Carolina, the rainfall was still enough to cause widespread flooding. The Tennessee River flooded beyond its banks, inundating local communities and forcing evacuations. With already saturated grounds from earlier storms, extra rain pushed the region into full-scale disaster mode. Bridges were washed out, roads were blocked, and access to emergency service severely hampered. The massive amount of rain in both North Carolina and Tennessee had a profound impact on the region's lakes and rivers. Lake Lure, for example, was one of the many reservoirs that faced the risk of overtopping as the water level soared. Officials scrambled to control water releases and prevent prevented further downstream floods. These efforts were critical in avoiding a complete dam failure, but the situation was tense and the margin of error was razor thin. Similar challenges were seen at other lakes and reservoirs as they push to their limits by the overwhelming volume of water. The rainfall totals weren't just staggering in inches. When we think about the sheer volume of water, it becomes even more mind-boggling. Across the hardest hit regions, we're talking about tens of millions of acres of feet. That is a lot of water. For example, for context, one acre of feet is the amount of water needed to cover an acre of land with one foot. Now imagine that multiplied across hundreds of thousands of square miles. That's the kind of water volume we see during Hurricane Helene overwhelming the region's lakes, rivers, and infrastructure. To really understand the scale of Hurricane Helene's rainfall, let's put it into perspective. The storm produced around 53 million acres of water in the hardest hit areas. Now, imagine that amount of rainfall had it fallen over the Colorado watershed. To put the massive rainfall of Hurricane Helene into perspective, another look at it would be, let's look at the numbers. The storm produced an estimated 53 million acre feet of water. That's enough to completely fill both Lake Mead and Lake Powell, two of the largest reservoirs in the United States. Combined, these lakes hold about 50 million acre feet at capacity, meaning the storm alone could have overflowed both lakes. But here's another way to think about it. This amount of water could be enough to keep Niagara flowing for an astonishing 314 days, nearly an entire year of continuous flows. That just shows you how much rain fall during this historic event. Crazy indeed. Wow. The power outage were also a significant issue. In Asheville alone, more than 700,000 people lost power. Relentless rain knocked down power lines and flooded substations. Crews worked around the 
clock to restore the electricity, but with so much damage, it was slow going. Entire neighborhoods were left in the dark, and for some, it took over a week to get the lights back on, and some are still without power even right now. Thank you for sticking around with me through this breakdown of Hurricane Helene's impact. The sheer volume of water and the damage it caused is hard to fathom, but communities are working hard to recover. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and leave a super thanks if you're feeling generous. Every bit of support helps keep this channel going. Until next time, stay safe and informed. God bless.